prominent attorney Wayne Monroe QC is reinforcing his suggestion made on social media and publicly that all migrants should be flogged or beaten to deter them from entering this country for the purpose of making money and residing illegally. Now Monroe says he doesn't know what all the backlash for a suggestion he made is about when no one has been vocal with options to assist in addressing this illegal migration issue. He feels that his view of flogging is just one way the government can save on spending millions of dollars on repatriation exercises. We are better regardless of how much people complain about the state of the country and the economy. They see us as better than where they've come from. So they enter, they work illegally, Bahamians hire them because they work for less money than Bahamians will. They make money. If they are apprehended, they're taken to the detention center, housed in conditions that are better than ones they were living in in the country, fed three square meals a day. When they're deported, they're deported by aircraft back to where they come from, and they're given back the money they made illegally in the Bahamas. That's the immigration situation. And because of that, people continuously keep coming. Now, despite opposition to his comments, Monroe insists that flogging will deter illegal migrants from thinking about taking a dangerous voyage to this country. Irreparably harm them physically. If it deters them mentally, then it would have worked. If it deters 10% of the people who come, that's 10% fewer jobs, that's 10% um, less revenue that we have to spend to deal with them. I expect the ambassador of from Haiti to make the remarks that he did because in the Bahamas he fights for the interests of his country, Haiti. And in this equation, Haiti is succeeding in this proposition because they get their citizens to be deported with cash. They get disadvantaged people to come here. They do virtually nothing to stop it. The Bahamas joined countries around the world in observing Human Rights Day by hosting a gender-based violence and persons with disabilities workshop. The workshop climaxed the 16 days of activism directed at the eradication of gender-based violence internationally and locally, which began on November 25th. Minister of Social Services, the Honorable Melanie Griffin, says the message of protecting the human rights of all is relevant and timely. Double discrimination pervades all aspects of their lives. When compared with men with disabilities, women with disabilities are more likely to experience poverty and isolation and tend to have lower salaries and be less represented in the workforce. As a result, they are also more likely to be victims of violence and or less able to escape the cycle of violence. Even in countries with a relatively high standard of living, women with disabilities are more likely to be poor or to have a lower standard of living than men with disabilities. The minister says addressing gender-based violence against persons with disabilities will require the involvement of all segments of society. Including disability-related NGOs, religious and service organizations, law enforcement and legal defense organizations, the health care system, as well as safe houses. Unified involvement is required if we are to successfully honor the obligations made by our country in adding our signature to the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, and our determined nona CEDAW, and our determined commitment to the eradication of every barrier necessary for the total elimination of this horrific problem of gender-based violence. 